a very good morning to all my dear students i welcome you all in your science class today i am going to teach you chapter number 12 reproduction in plants in your previous class you have got some basic ideas about the chapter let's start the chapter with small introduction the name of the chapter is reproduction in plants so what does the word reproduction means production of new individuals from their parents is known as reproduction reproduction occurs in all the living beings which give rise to their offsprings like plants birds animals etc so we can say that reproduction is the most fundamental process carried out by living organisms however there are differences in the way living organisms exhibit the process since the chapter is about plants let's discuss some basics about it how does the reproduction happens in plant the plant consists of leaf stem and roots these are the vegetative parts of the plant which help the plant in reproduction the plants also has fruits which contains seeds inside them usually we discard the seeds seeds again help in reproduction as they germinate and form new plants plants have flowers as well which have pollen grains inside them which help the plant in reproduction flowers may have either the male part or the female part or both the male and female part what are these male and female parts the female part of a plant is carpel and the male part is the stamen the female part which is carpel consists of stigma style and ovary it also has ovule while the male part stamen consists of anther and filament which is also called as stalk moving ahead modes of reproduction there are several ways of reproduction of plants they are categorized in two terms first one is asexual reproduction and the second one is sexual reproduction what is the main difference between them asexual reproduction means that new plants are obtained without producing seeds in sexual reproduction new plants are obtained from seeds which means that in asexual reproduction plants can give rise to new plants without seeds whereas in sexual reproduction new plants are obtained from seeds asexual reproduction just now we discussed that these are the plants which produce offsprings without production of seeds or spores for example here you can see an image of a plant if i cut the plant with leaves and a small portion of stem then i place the part of the plant in the soil after some time that portion of the plant starts growing and forms into a new plant which means that a new plant has been reproduced with a small portion of the parent plant it means the reproduction has been happened but what kind of reproduction is this this is asexual reproduction because we obtained a plant without the production of seeds or the spores let's discuss the modes of asexual reproduction they are vegetative propagation budding fragmentation and spore formation vegetative propagation this is a type of asexual reproduction as the name suggests reproduction occurs through the vegetative parts of the plant such as stems leaves buds and roots these plants take less time to grow and are exact replicas of their parents as they are produced from a single parent let's understand this method with some activities 
the first activity 12.1 once you have selected a healthy rose stem cut the stem above the first set of leaves at 45 degree angle create holes with a stick or pencil for the cuttings in the soil make sure the soil is moist then place the cuttings into the soil you have to gently push the cutting down several inches into the soil or half the length of the cutting once the cutting is in the place pat down the soil around the stem keep the rose cuttings moist the most important thing for successful rose cuttings is that they remain moist so water them frequently then monitor the rose cuttings to ensure that they are hydrated and taking root you have to keep an eye on the cuttings to make sure they never dry up as well as to make sure the cuttings are taking root you can see the roots are growing by gently tugging on the cuttings you should be able to feel a slight resistance after a week or two meaning that roots are growing well you can try out this activity by your own and then observe and record the number of days taken for roots to come out and new leaves to arise apart from flower buds there are buds in the axil of leaves which develop into shoots these buds are called as the vegetative buds you also know that bud consists of a short stem around which immature overlapping leaves are folded the vegetative buds can also give rise to a new plant let's discuss another activity which is 12.2 for this activity you need a potato take a fresh potato and you can cut the potato in 3 to 4 pieces make sure that each of the piece is having an eye now you can dig the soil and place the potato on the ground make sure the soil is moist when placing the potatoes on the ground keep in mind that the sprouts are facing the sky and make sure each potato has decent space for growth after that bury that potato to support the growth you need to water them regularly you can try this activity as well and observe their progress after a few weeks of planting you might see the stem and leaves grow tall enough above the ground now you can start hilling hilling is pretty much all about burying the plant again but not a total bury because you only cover the bottom area of the plant without bothering the leaves after 3 weeks or so the plants might grow taller and you can do the next hilling keep repeating it and later on after the full growth of the plant you can harvest them you can try this activity with different plants like sweet potato dahlia ginger turmeric etc so these are the plants which give rise to a new plant from the roots there are some plants which can give rise to a new plant from leaves one of that plant is bryophyllum the full name of this plant is bryophyllum pinnatum bryophyllum bryo means sprout and phyllum means leaf so that's why we call this plant as sprout leaf plant this plant has buds in the margin of leaves if the leaves of this plant falls on a moist soil each bud can give rise to a new plant here you can see that it is very notable for vegetatively growing small plantlets on the fringes of leaves these eventually drop off and root the new plantlets arise from the tissue in the notches of leaves which are the buds or you can also say that the sprouts here are some examples of plants which give rise to a new plant from the leaves plants such as cacti produces new plants when their parts get detached from the main plant body each detached part can grow into a new plant apart from cactus there are many more plants like 
African velvet, aloe vera and many more. I hope that you have understood the basics and introduction of reproduction in plants. So in our today's class, we have covered the introduction, modes of reproduction, asexual reproduction. Under asexual reproduction, we have covered the topic vegetative propagation. In our next class, we will cover the other methods of asexual reproduction and then sexual reproduction. Thank you. Till then, study well and take care.